Three reasons why you are still struggling with retroactive jealousy. Welcome back to another video. My name is Matt. And again, in this video, we'll go through three reasons why you are still struggling with retroactive jealousy. This was something that I had to go back to quite a bit when I wasn't seeing or feeling any results during my time uh, overcoming RJ, especially for the 13 years I was going through it. And when I really found out the things that I needed to do to overcome this, I always went back to this. Am I doing these? Is this still happening? Is this going on? And when I really narrowed these three items down into things that I should stop doing, <laughs> that's when I started getting over this. So if you're doing these three things, make sure you put an end to this because I'm telling you the faster you can put an end to these three things, the faster you will overcome retroactive jealousy. So we'll get to that in today's video. Before we do though, if you could take a quick moment, smash the like button, that'll activate YouTube's algorithm and get this video out to more people that need to see it. So I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already downloaded my free retroactive jealousy calming meditation, please take a copy of that home before you go. It's absolutely free. It'll calm a lot of the anxiety, calm down your nervous system, make you feel a whole lot better, um, especially when these thoughts are coming up. So I'll leave a link in the top of the description box below for you to download that for free today. Okay, so if you're still struggling, here's probably one of the reasons why. Deep down somewhere, you still think you can't overcome this, okay? And maybe not even deep down, maybe there's just that voice in your head that's saying, you can't do this, it's not possible. Look how much hurt you're in, how sucky you feel. You don't even remember what it's like to feel normal. So you're never going to be normal again. Your partner's past is way too great. You'll never be able to accept any of this. Do those thoughts sound familiar? They did for me too, right? They did for me. So the problem is if we continue to listen to those thoughts and not just listen, because we'll, we'll, we will hear them for a while, but take them seriously ruminate with them, dig down deeper in them, interact with them, they're going to become bigger and bigger and bigger and probably be true, truer and truer and truer because we're going to interact with it so much we're going to get caught up in more of those OCD thought loops. So anytime that you get these thoughts of, oh, I can't overcome this, oh, this is too difficult to do, you have to say no. Literally, you have to say no. You have to treat those thoughts as OCD thoughts. That the minute you start indulging in them, the minute you start interacting with them, you're going to give them more power. And the more power they have over you, the more they can control you. You have to, again, pretend like that voice saying you can't overcome this is a bad friend giving bad advice. And just block it out, just say no, just say no. Yeah, I'm sure you hear it, so I don't wanna say blocking out because you hear the voice but just say, no, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to give you the time of day. I'm disregarding you today. Again, the minute I started doing this, the minute I started believing I could overcome it because I started getting better. But I think we've all been through that point, And probably you right now watching this, that you might not think you can overcome this. And I'm telling you, anybody can. Anybody can. Okay? I've, I've seen, at this point, I've been doing this for quite a few years. I think I've probably seen over a thousand people do it. Not just me. It's not just I'm just here telling you that I did it and so maybe you can do it. I've seen thousands of other people do it. I've got emails and emails from people, comments, all that they've done. It's, it's awesome. It's fantastic. It's possible. And what's possible for one is possible for all. And what's been possible for thousands is definitely possible for you. But you cannot take this voice seriously that says you can't do this. We've all had that voice. We've all had that voice. And the minute we stop taking that voice seriously, the minute we start treating that voice as OCD, the minute we start overcoming this, the minute that voice calms down, the minute that voice says, well, dang, they're not listening to me, so I guess I better take my energy elsewhere. And then they go away. It's very powerful. You are capable of overcoming this. I know deep down, you know that you can. So do not take these thoughts seriously that say you can't do it. Do not do that. The second reason you might still be struggling with retroactive jealousy, comes back to that classic word, compulsions, the compulsive behaviors. Remember, this is the big one. This is the big one. And that's why it's probably included in 99.99% .99 of the videos. We have to stop doing the compulsive behaviors. If there's one thing that I would recommend, one thing I'd recommend on overcoming RJ, it is to stop doing the compulsive behaviors. Stop asking the questions. Stop doing the, the Facebook stalking or the social media stalking. 
Um, you know, if, if you're using um, like alcohol and stuff to mask some of the pain, you got to stop that. The thought rumination, the thought exploration, trying to rationalize the thoughts, digging down deep into these thoughts to try to find answers to be okay with them. We have to stop. That's all a compulsive behavior. And remember with OCD, obsessive compulsive behavior, we get stuck in this thought loop. We get stuck in this thought loop. We get an obsessive thought. We feel anxiety. We feel that we got to do a compulsive behavior to calm that anxiety. And when we do that compulsive behavior, we might feel a little bit better. We get temporary relief, but that feeling does not last very long. For me, it was like 30 seconds. <laughs> I felt maybe somewhat good for 15, 10 seconds, not, not very long. And then I get a worse thought would come up, a worse thought. Okay, we're stuck in this OCD loop cycle. We're trying to feel better as quick as possible. So we try to do a compulsive behavior to feel better. We have to suspend. We have to delay that wanting to feel good for a little bit and understand the sooner we're trying to feel good and do this compulsive behavior and explore these thoughts, the worse we're making ourselves, the worse we're making ourselves, the more stuck we are getting. So it's very important to not try to feel better as fast as possible, to sit with that uneasy feeling, that feeling that does not feel good. You're going to want to do a compulsive behavior. You're going to go, ah, 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 but you can't do it. You have to kind of reverse this, this idea of the feeling, right? The reason uh, when we get a feeling and we say it doesn't feel good is it's basically because we're telling ourselves, oh, this feeling doesn't feel good. Oh no, something's wrong, something's wrong. But we have the power to feel that emotion, that not good emotion that doesn't feel good and say, I like feeling this. This means I'm healing. This means I'm getting better the more I feel it. I want to feel more of this. I want to breathe it in. Yes, yes, yes. It feels good. We just totally turned everything on its head. When we start looking forward to feeling like this, what? How is that even possible? It's possible by you just saying that. This moment of discomfort, that means, yes, bring it on. That means, yes, it feels good. That means, yes, I'm overcoming this. This is another opportunity for me to overcome this. Okay, you gain that strength over yourself. And it makes it so much easier to not need to do the compulsive behavior because now all of a sudden you're saying, no, I, I like feeling this way. This feels good, right? This feels good to me. This means I'm getting better. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to explore any thoughts. I don't need a social media stock. I don't need to do this because I like feeling like this. Wow, there's a lot of power in that if you can take control and do that. And the minute I started doing that was, was again, really the time I, I, I started really grabbing this thing by the throat and winning this battle. So cut out the compulsive behaviors. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but you are absolutely capable of doing it 100%. So again, understand you can overcome this. Don't listen to that voice in your head. Don't do the compulsive behaviors. And three, let's stop blaming the outside. And I run into a lot of this, and this is obviously very obvious. Um, I'm sure you felt this way before. We got to stop blaming the outside for how we feel on the inside. Okay. It's very easy to say, if my partner just didn't do this, I would feel better. If my partner didn't just do that with that one person, I'd feel better. I'm okay with all my partner's exes. I'm okay that they did this, but it's because they did this one thing. I will never be able to get over it. If I can just find somebody who didn't do this thing, I'd be okay. If I can just find somebody who didn't do that, I'd be okay. And that's false. That's absolutely false. That's again, us looking at the outside and saying the outside needs to change in order for us to change. And that's not the case at all, okay? This might get a little esoteric for somebody, but, but this is like very, very proven is how we feel on the inside is a reflection of how we feel on the outside. Nothing on the outside can change to make us feel better about ourselves. We have to change on the inside for the outside to change, for anything on the outside to change. Again, and, and this, this goes into what a lot of people have found out with retroactive jealousy, including myself. If I just had somebody that didn't have much of a past, I wouldn't have RJ. And so they break up with their partner. They find someone that doesn't have much of a past. And guess what? Their RJ finds a way to come into that relationship. Maybe even if it's just through someone they kissed or someone they held hands with one time. Or um, maybe it... it um, creates general jealousy and you don't want them talking to anybody when they go out on the town or whatever the case is, or you don't like them going out with their friends and you become obsessed about that. The retroactive jealousy, the jealousy, it will not die. 
unless you handle the inside. You have to handle the inside. Do not try to change the outside in order to feel better on the inside. It will not work. It will not work. I, I Please take my word for it. Because I've tried it many, 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 many times. And it flat out does not work. The inside must change first. You must put in the steps to overcome this. And then everything on the outside will fall into place. And then that thing that your partner did that you thought really, really bothered you, that you wanted to break up with them so you could find somebody that didn't do it, that won't even bother you anymore. That won't bother you. And you'll look at your relationship and say, God, I'm, I'm so glad that I didn't leave this person because I do love them, because I do care for them, because we are a perfect match for each other. And it was just that one thing that I thought needed to change. But to come to find out, it didn't need to change. I needed to change. And once I changed, everything else fell right into place. So do not think if something on the outside changed, I'd feel better. If only this happened, I'd feel better. No, change in here. You change this. Blame the inside and change the inside. Change your thoughts. Go through these, these steps that we talk about in all the videos. Do your daily meditation. Disregard these thoughts when they come up. That's your answer. That is your answer. And everything else out here gets so much easier. Again, you know with my partner's past, if you've watched this channel before, I was on the brink of suicide. Some of these thoughts killed me so much on the inside. Killed me so much on the inside. I'm still with the same partner. In fact, I'm married to her now. And guess what? I don't feel like killing myself anymore. These same thoughts, these same things that I thought were deal breakers are not deal breakers. Nothing on the outside changed. I changed. I changed. And since I changed and I, I, I put in the work and, and did everything, nothing on the outside phases me. It does not phase me. I won this battle. I won it. And you can do it too. Take full responsibility for how you feel and change it. Put in the work. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You have what it takes and you can do it. That wraps up today's video, everybody. If you enjoyed it, please smash that like button before you go. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And if you want some more help in overcoming retroactive jealousy, check out those links in the description below before you go. Sign up for any of my retroactive jealousy courses and I'll throw in my email address absolutely free and we'll do some one-on-one -on -one free email coaching. That's right, free. Don't gotta pay thousands of dollars for coaching. It's absolutely free when you enroll in a course. So I look forward to helping you out. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.